Okay, hello and welcome to this webinar about unit testing, the first kind of webinar from the Software Engineering Working Group of the ASA Biopharmaceutical Section. And my name is Daniel zabanis Bove, and I have with me... I'm Jonathan Fiddy, uh, Director of Modeling Simulation at Sage Therapeutics. Great, and today we're gonna to talk about unit testing for our developers, the basics. So what are we going to talk about? We are going to talk about the scary subject of unit testing. So first thing that um, this is, is um, uh, we're going to introduce how to create unit tests for our packages. And then we're going to show that writing unit tests is actually pretty easy and a natural progression from examples. OK. And and what, what does unit testing actually mean? So here's just the Wikipedia definition. So unit tests ensure that a section of an application, that is basically the unit that we talk about here, that meets its design and behave as intended. Um, so a unit could be typically like a function or a procedure, and the unit test provides a strict written contract that the piece of code must satisfy. And basically by writing tests first for the smallest testable units, and, and then later the compound behaviors between the units, we can build up comprehensive tests for complex applications. So what is the structure of a unit test? First, we set up the unit test. Uh, we need to have all the inputs for the test ready before the tests actually run. Then we compute the results, which will be tested after which uh, we define the expected results to match against the computed outputs. And then we compare the actual with the expected result to see that they match. Great. And yeah, and for unit tests, uh, for our packages, how do these look like? So there's different uh, frameworks. The most popular testing framework for our packages is TestDat. And therefore, we show here the tested syntax, just as an example. But the structure is actually similar in the other frameworks. So the syntax here as follows. We start with test dat. Then we have a label as a string here for the, for the test. Then we have in curly brackets the body of the test. So that's actually the contents of the test. And in there, we have the setup. As Yoni just mentioned, we have the compute part where we apply for example, our function to the input. Then we have the expect part, so we hard code what the result of the computation should be. And finally, we compare the result with expectation. What kind of comparisons can we use other than expect identical, which we did just now? So all comparisons start with expect underscore prefix and takes the result and expect it as the arguments. An error will be given if the comparison evaluates as something different than what was expected. So below are some of the different expectations that you can have. You can even expect an error, which sounds counterintuitive, but sometimes we have uh, functions uh, that error out, and we want to be able to expect those. So that's uh, definitely something that um, is used uh, in a lot of packages. Mm -hmm. But uh, Yoni, wait a second. I mean, our packages, we typically put some example code for the documented functions and then objects, and these are actually automatically run by the R command check. So isn't that like enough? Do we, do we even need tests? Well, it only gets you part of the way there, I think. So not really. We'll go into more detail of why there are benefits to going beyond examples now. So sometimes you can miss bugs if a code changes and it's not uh, included in the example of those changes. It won't be detected in the example. Um, so things like uh, no outputs or wrong outputs for a function, you won't get that in the example. It'll just run. Um, Usually, we don't compare the expected versus results behavior in an example. We just want to show that the function actually works. Also, in examples, you can't uh, evaluate internal functions. So a lot of times, we expose 
uh, functions to the end user and a lot of internal uh, machinery that goes into the package don't get tested at all through the examples. So that that's why it's more advantageous to do um, unit testing. The manual debugging becomes necessary to track, uh, track down the root of the error where the examples are kind of overarching general things. And you want to be able to, if they don't work, if the example doesn't work, then you don't necessarily know where the problem was. And you have to do extra work in order to figure that out. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, yeah, and and actually unit tests um, yeah, have a lot of reasons why we should write them. Um, as just mentioned, um, basically we, we can faster debug problems because we only need to search like in a narrow um, unit scope um, kind of place for the root cause. Um, we can develop faster because we have confidence during developing new code or refactoring old code that we don't have any um, bugs introduced from, from these changes. Um, we, we get a better design for our package because we kind of are encouraged to aggressively refactor uh, functions into smaller maintainable units because that not that makes our life much easier when writing tests. And also we have better kind of documentation for developers. So developers can basically look at the unit tests to understand really all exported and internal functions uh, usage and, and behavior. And yeah, last but not least, we th we should think like economically about this. We kind of reduce future costs um, by writing unit tests. So it's kind of an investment that that pays off long term. But when should I write the unit tests? So the best practice is to do it before you start coding. Sounds like a a big lift, but it pays off, as Daniel said just now. It pays off to understand what are your requirements for the new feature that you want to add to your package and then fulfill those through the through the test driven development during coding when developing new functions you need to have testing in place uh, so you can write it as you're coding When you have uh, pull requests, so when you're collaborating with other people, you want to be able to uh, have unit tests run automatically for them so they can review your code instead of for looking for bugs. So the unit tests act as a way to be able to make sure that the basic requirements of the package are being fulfilled. And finally, when, when bugs bite. So when a bug is detected, you can add a unit test to reproduce this bug. You can fix the code and then confirm that the unit test passes. That way you know you fixed the bug. And you're building out a library of unit tests as you go. So when you detect a new bug, you can add that to your library of unit tests. And then over time, you can get more specific about what you're testing in your package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're also going to look at how we should write the unit tests. So they should be isolatable, so basically be able to run on their own without first executing a long list of stuff before the test. They should be uh, re repeatable or reproducible, so they should have deterministic behavior. So for example, if you use any kind of random number generator um, function inside, always make sure to set the seed before doing that. Um, they should be readable, so that's just keep it simple um, so that other developers or yourself later can understand what you wrote there. Um, they should be small, so each test should only test one behavior so that the label actually means something and we can look you know, you know in a few lines of code that's the whole test so that's easy to understand, maintain and fast so we don't want to have unit tests that run like for minutes each one should be only a couple of seconds ideally maximum so because we will run this like in automation for for example during the pull request um, on github we will have certain actions that will run all the tests of the package automatically and of course also on on cron the checks will be run 
um, automatically. So that's why we want to have them fast. And always think about coverage. So when you have a function, especially functions that have a lot of if else or similar kind of conditional statements, make sure you test all the relevant features and all the different code paths um, through the function. So in summary, for unit tests, they are required in daily business and professional software development. They take time to write. So be prepared to, to make the investment. Even though they take time to write, they pay off in the in the back end. So when once you have the test base ready, then you can speed up your development and debugging and improve the design and documentation and be able to communicate better what your package does to other developers. And you can avoid bugs that can be uh, orders more expensive to figure out where the package is breaking. So if you have good unit testing, you can avoid bugs. And if you have bugs, you can pivot quickly, fix them, and move on. They are also complemented by higher level tests, so integration tests. Yeah. Great. So that was the first kind of video um, from, from the working group. And um, we would be very happy if you leave any comments or questions below and have a look at the links below. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for the next uh, video coming soon. Thanks. Thank you.